Hello everyone! Welcome to Customizing PG Star for Mesa. So I made these about five years ago, but things have changed. For one, I got some actual lights, I got a real microphone, um, and just plenty of experience on delivering this at the Mesa Summer School, and so I thought it would be time for a refresh. I'm also going to do this in a single shot as opposed to a sequence of five, and I will put little timers in the description down below so you can get quickly to a section that you may want to listen to. So customizing PG Star for Mesa. So go ahead and download the work directory Mesa underscore PG Star underscore 2020 zip from the Zenodo URL which is going to be given down below in the video description. So if you want to pause the video and go ahead and download that, that would be great. Otherwise I'll keep going. So you want to take that file that you download from Zenodo, that zip file, and you want to put it where you do your Mesa work. And then go ahead and issue the commands uh, cd mesa underscore pg star underscore 2020 and do a make. So I'm already downloaded here. Um, so I'll do that. So after you uncompress it, you'll see sort of a standard Mesa work directory. Uh, and just go ahead and type make mk. Boom. And so I do assume, of course, that you've got Mesa installed uh, and you've set your um, Mesa dir echo dollar Mesa dir. And so this is for 12.778 is what we're working on on this one. Okay, so we've built Mesa. Uh, there's our star executable. And so what we're going to be running here, uh, we're going to pick up this zams.mod file right here. And we're going to be running uh, a close approximation to the 2.1 solar mass model that from Mesa 5, so this is figure 1 of Mesa 5, uh, HR diagram, T effective on the x-axis, luminosity, photon luminosity on the y-axis, uh, and the yellow line here is um, what we will be calculating today. It's going to take a good long while to run, it's not going to finish all the way, and that's perfectly fine, because for the purposes of this tutorial, I just want something that runs nice and long um, as it goes. Okay. So you're free to carry this on after this tutorial ends and you can run this uh, approximation to this 2.1 all the way out if you like. Okay, so let's go ahead and type run. Type dot slash rn. And first thing it's going to do is it's going to start reading some uh, EOS tables. And so every time that Mesa takes a time step, it's going to run our endless PG star uh, at each time step, so you can change the plots as you go live. So currently Mesa is caching the nuclear reaction rates, and if you make a mistake, uh, and I might during this presentation, uh, and Mesa stops, that's perfectly okay. Uh, just do an ls photo, and then do a, a restart dot slash re. Um, picking up from the last photo. And it's important that you do it from the last photo because there's a Easter egg surprise at the end. So I want you to pick it up from the last photo if you make a mistake or if I make a mistake. Okay, so Mace is running away. Uh, we have picked this up from the zero age main sequence uh, just so we don't have to um, go through the pre-main sequence stage where not a whole lot happens. So you can see in this 2.1 solar mass model, uh, we're starting to uh, do a non-equilibrium CNO burn. Uh, as it comes into equilibrium before we start doing the hydrogen burning on the main sequence. So Mesa is running away here. I've got it uh, set. So you can check this in the endless project uh, that I wanted to spit out what is um, limiting the time step at each one and it's appropriately the central temperature which is limiting the time step. Okay. Uh, okay, so we've got our first plot up, and these are the abundance plot. This is like the gas tank. Uh, so what's in the gas tank? So let's see what we got. So go ahead and edit in list PG star, and you will see the abundance profile plot commands. Uh, and then we're going to change some of the options. We can change the window width. We can change the number of isotopes to show, uh, and so on. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to use Emacs. I'm an Emacs bear, so I'm going to edit Emacs in list PG star. Uh, and you're free to walk through some of this material. Uh, 
and here's our abundance plot. So we've got the window flag true, uh, which has come up. I've set the size of the plot to be 10, but we can go ahead and change that to anything we like. Let's go ahead and change that to 16. And whoa, you can see we got a much bigger plot. Um, I'm gonna go back to 10 and it will shrink it back. Uh, suppose uh, here are the list of the isotopes to show. Suppose I only wanted it to show, I don't know, five. So we can change that to five and we only got the five. Uh, four here because oxygen's off the list. So we can go back to 20 and there we go. And if we wanted to, if uh, minus three log, uh, 10 to minus three on the y-axis is not enough. You want to go down even lower in mass fraction. Do minus six and we'll go down to minus six and we'll pick up all of the um, abundances in this particular network. Uh, and then down below, if you want file output, there's some file outputs. I presently have this set to false and that's perfectly fine. All right, so we got our first plot up of the gas tank, the abundances. You can see we're starting to burn hydrogen here. Uh, let's change that back to minus three just for YouTube video sake. Uh, and hydrogen is starting to deplete in the core. Let's see how our run is doing. Uh, and our time step is now limited by the change in hydrogen in the center. Perfectly fine, perfectly great. We don't want that to change too much as it depletes. All right, so we did that. So further down in the uh, plot profile is the power. So currently uh, we have the power plot set window flag set to false. So let's go ahead and change that to true. Save the file and boom, ah, we got our second plot up. So this is our power plot uh, and with hydrogen burning out in the core, uh, kind of as expected you're, uh, for this particular mass, you're getting both CNO and PP um, abundances. This color bar down here is indicating which regions are convective. So blue here is convective, white is um, overshooting. So there's a little bit of overshooting in this model. And then the green is radiative. You can also see that on the abundance plot here where we've got convection down here, a little semi-convection here, and then radiative on the way out. Okay, and as usual in these things, you can change um, uh, some of the limits. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so I've got it set for the x-axis is zero in min and then minus 101 says the maximum that's in the model. So this is a, a two solar mass model. So it's going to go out to two. Uh, you're free to change that if you just wanted to look at the interior abundances, let's say. So let's just do it to 0 0.6 and we would just see a blow up of the interior power profiles. So these two plots are two of my favorites because the abundances of the gas tank and the power is how quickly you're burning down that gas tank. So let's change that to minus 101. So that's a magic number in um, PG star to just use the maximum that's there. So you don't have to hard code the maximum. And you can change the limits here as well. Uh, I go from minus five to 25. We can make that equal to 15, which will take away some of the uh, blank space here. Um, and so we pick it up at 15. And so you can go ahead and change those and experiment with that. So we got our first two plots up. So further down are the Kip and Han plots. So these are sort of space-time diagrams, Kip and Han diagrams. And that window is currently set to false. So we want to go ahead and change it to uh, true to get the Kip and Han window up. Uh, and then go ahead and play with some of the options. So let's go down in the file. So as in fact, Kip and Han is false. Let's go ahead and change it to true. And boom. This is our Kip and Han diagram. So this is a uh, starting at the zero age main sequence. Um, uh, so I got it running from zero to two and then this is model number on the x-axis. Some of the color coding is described here below. So we've got uh, various shades of red is where the nuclear burning is happening. Uh, less nuclear burning farther out, more burning closer in, so shades of red. And then blue, we have the convective region, and then the, again, the white is, is uh, overshooting. Uh, and so you can see there's a little bit of overshooting bounding the convective region. Uh, then 
there is color coding here on the mass of the core. Uh, so for example, we're starting to build the helium core here. So we can check that by going to our abundance plot and yes, indeedy. Um, hydrogen is depleted in the core and so are helium dominated. And so you see this up step here as we've uh, got about a 0 0.2 helium mass core and that's about right. Yep. Okay, so very good. So we got that and of course you can change things here. Um, let's go ahead and change some of the, um, we can turn off the mass boundaries. Oops, almost made a typo there. In that green line indicating the helium core mass uh, in this part of the x-axis has gone away. I happen to find that pretty useful, so I'm going to turn that back to true. Uh, and so different core masses will be different different colors here. So silicon, if we got there, which we won't for a two solar mass star, will be purple and so on. Uh, and again, I've set the limit uh, to use the maximum number. Uh, we can show mixing. We can turn that off if we don't want to see the convection. We just want to pay attention to the burning. That's perfectly fine. Uh, and you can see the shades of red here indicating the nuclear burning. I happen to like it to see what regions are convective, so I'm going to change that to true. Uh, we can show burn. We can turn that off if we wanted to. If we just wanted to focus on the convective regions. And so we're convective down. I like seeing both. Uh, and show luminosities. Let's go ahead and change that to true. Uh, and so if you do that, then the right y-axis will change from a duplicate of what's on the left. The mass will change from the luminosity. And you've got various luminosities here. You've got the luminosity of hydrogen, lumin lum uh, luminosity of helium, uh, neutrino luminosity. That's always a fun one. Neutrinos are hot these days. Uh, and then the total log L. And so various combinations of the luminosity there. So we'll just kind of leave that up for now. And again, there's file output on any of these plots, uh, which you can change that to, uh, well, that's an error there. How about that? Uh, false. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good thing. Uh, at least it didn't die there. So, okay. So we've played around with our Kipnon diagram. And further down are the HR diagrams. Let's go ahead and play with the HR diagram. Let's see where we are in our HR diagram. So let's change that to true. And we get our fourth window up, which is the HR diagram. Uh, this one's running from 5 to minus 3.3, and then from log of luminosity, photon luminosity total, from 0 to 4. And you can see this little squiggle here. This is the non-equilibrium CNO burn. Uh, as the CNO comes into equilibrium for this particular mass, there's always this little jiggle around right as you come onto the um, main sequence as the CNO abundances uh, come into equilibrium and then we start moving out. There's a lot of white space in here so let's go ahead and change some of those limits. So 3.3, uh, uh, let's certainly cut it down to maybe 4.4, let's see what that looks like. And going out to 4 seems a bit much so let's go to 3 on the y-axis. And boom, so we've kind of centered this and we've made it even bigger. And of course, you can blow this up more if you would like. Here's again as our non equilibrium CNO burn. Um, and we may come back and change this uh, as desired to get a blow up of what we're looking for. Um, let's just do one more. Let's do 3.6, 4.2. And okay, so we blew up our HR diagram, peels off the main sequence, goes through uh, hydrogen depletion here, and then starts making its way over uh, to the red giant branch. And let's take a look at our fuel. Yep. And so we have burnt out hydrogen in the center, and we are now in the process of uh, doing basically a hydrogen shell burn, and we're building the helium core. Okay. So we've got four up. So these are just some examples. So in general, I want to walk through the different types of plots that PG Star can do. So one is history plots, 
and these show information that are in your history underscore columns dot list. If you don't specify a history columns list, then it takes it from the defaults, and we'll show where that is in a minute. Uh, but anything that you have in your history column, uh, in your history file, can be plotted in a history file. Um, Alternatively, instead of as a function of time, you can take a look at a snapshot in time as a function of mass or profile plots, and these show information about a current model. And you can plot anything that can be in a profile columns list. You are not limited to items that are only in your local, if you have one, profile columns list. And in fact, in this run, if you look, I do have a local history columns list and a local profile columns list because uh, I didn't want all that information I just wanted some uh, and so there are local ones which you can take a look at uh, but we will come back to this on PG star okay so history plots profile plots single panel plots these contain one graph and optionally with a second axis so an example of that is our Kippenhahn diagram so let's go ahead and uh, I think that was number three yep so there's our Kippenhahn diagram. This is an example of a single panel plot. We've got a y-axis, optionally got a second y-axis, and whatever you're plotting in there. Then we have multiple panel plots. So we're going to stack basically single panel plots on top of each other. They're all going to have the same x-axis, and we're going to be building a couple of uh, customized multiple panel plots uh, as we go here. And then finally, there are grid plots where you combine several plots all in a specific layout. And this is our goal. Our goal is to get to a custom grid plot that's going to be like a dashboard of everything that's going on in the model, or everything I want to see anyway. Um, going on in the model, you're free to change that grid around. But this is where we're headed, is a grid plot. So a couple of key directories, which are your friends, uh, dollar mesa dir, so wherever you keep it, star defaults, pg star uh, defaults. Oops, leave that on there. So let's go ahead and visit one of those. Uh, I'm keep that up there. Uh, and this will be interesting. I wonder if I can do this. Yeah. No, I'm not going to let me cut and paste while it's live playing. Okay. Uh, let's just try it. Dollar Mesa Dura. Let's see how smart Emax is. Uh, star. Size D. Yeah. Ooh. Recognize it. PG star. Defaults. So these are all the different kinds of plots that Mesa can make, and if you don't specify them, when it picks up all of the defaults from this file. So this one can be useful if you want to add new types of plots that I'm not necessarily showing here, uh, or if you want to see all the options that are available for a given type of plot. I don't use them all here, but um, all those options are in your PG star defaults. There's also the default profile columns. And this is valuable because not only does it set the defaults, this is the minimal set that if you just don't say anything, you're going to get about seven or eight quantities, just the minimum needed. And then a list of every possible thing you can put uh, in your profile columns, and they're all commented out. Uh, so for example, if you wanted the velocity at the outer radial zone, <coughs> you just uncomment this uh, at your run, and it'll start putting that into your profile profiles. Uh, which are kept in your logs directory. And then similarly, there's the history columns list. Um, again, this is the default. Uh, there's a minimal amount of stuff, real minimal, <laughs> in the defaults. Uh, and so if you want more, uh, you just uncomment them and that'll go along as you go. Um, and so these are your friends because they serve as dictionaries of things that you can put in your history uh, or anything in your profiles. Okay, so let's go back to our enlist and we did our HR. So let's go ahead and put some gauges on our model that is building its helium core. Uh, let's go ahead and change the profile panel wind flag to one. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So profile panel wind one. And we're going to change that to true, and let's see what magic we get. And boom. As you can tell, I'm starting to get, uh, we have a lot of window plots up. We got 
five windows up now. This is starting to get a little bit annoying if I wanted to shift between them um, to see different things. <clears throat> but okay, we've got our first profile panel up. Uh, I have chosen the x-axis to be the log of the pressure. So basically we are looking at the surface regions of the model. Uh, this is the uh, uh, temperature on the x-axis in yellow, the opacity, so we've got a single opacity bump. <coughs> this is a z bump, the iron opacity bump. I've got the uh, density in yellow, the luminosity in blue. And then finally on the third panel down here, I've got the entropy in uh, uh, yellow, and so entropy is around 20 or so. And then I've got uh, gamma 1, which is a measure of the instability of the outside region. So when gamma 1 dips below 4 thirds, as it is here, uh, we have uh, an instability. And you can see that right here in the density, where we're getting a little density inversion here um, as gamma 1 goes less than 4 thirds. OK. Uh, and so uh, let's go ahead and change something on here. So suppose the luminosity, which is kind of boring at this point in the model. There's a reason why I have it on luminosity here. It becomes pretty interesting in the post-AGB phase, but at this phase it's pretty boring. It's the constant luminosity, nothing much going out here. The um, opacity is not changing that too much. So let's go ahead and change luminosity uh, in the second Y panel to uh, velocity in kilometers per second. So we'll go down here. So here's the contents of panel one, log T, there's the opacity, uh, and then log rho, luminosity, entropy, and gamma one. So yes, in fact, that is what's plotted. And we want to change this luminosity to a velocity in kilometers per second. Well, what is that name? This is a profile plot, okay? So we know where our friends are. So we're gonna go to our profile columns list. These are all the things we could put in there. Uh, and I don't know what it is off the top of my head, so I'm going to do a search for velocity. Velocity. Uh, velocity in kilometers per second. Okay, so that's what we want to do. So I will velocity underscore km underscore per second. Makes sense. So I'm going to cut, copy that. Okay, go back to my endless PG star. Um, I actually want that, so I'm just going to comment it out, and I'm going to change luminosity to velocity in kilometers per sec, and boom, I've got a velocity in kilometers per second. There's nothing shown in blue, which means my axes are way off, so I've got it from 0 to 1, so that's not too useful for uh, velocity kilometers per second. So let's go ahead and change the limits. So uh, the min is 1. Uh, change that to minus 101. So both of those will then auto scale. And do do. And so you can see why I didn't get anything before. It's because the velocities in the outer region are quite small. Um, so it's not very hydrodynamic. It's basically a sequence of static models. Um, but there's the velocities relatively small, 10 to the minus 8 kilometers per second, increasing as you get outward toward the surface. Okay. Uh, so we'll just leave that up. I don't mind if that's the velocity at this point, so we'll leave that there. So good, so we've got our first example of a profile panel and we've changed something on those profile panels. You can change any of those that you want by looking in your um, profile defaults. Okay, so how about the uh, central temperature and density? Uh, how do those change with time? And so to get that kind of information, what the middle of the star is doing over time, so this is a history plot, we want to find our T row. <clears throat> so here's our T row wind flag. What's up above is other profile panels. We'll see shortly. Um, T row wind flags. Let's go ahead and change that to true. And yet we get yet another window up. Windows are getting annoying. Okay, uh, so this is the central density, central temperature. So this is a central rho T plane. Um, we've got the time curve here of how the central density and central temperature have behaved over the course of the model. Uh, so it's, in general, been heating up and getting more dense. The core is now T 
degenerate, the helium core is degenerate because we're gonna, or at least partially degenerate. So this line here, this dashed line is the degeneracy line. So um, you can think of it as a degeneracy line. Um, it's a Fermi energy uh, over KT, I think equal to four. <coughs> And that's sort of a demarker of degeneracy. So our helium core is degenerate, <coughs> so it's not going to be that much hotter as we make our way to uh, about a 0 0.5, 0 0.6 helium core, at which case we will do a helium ignition. Uh, okay, and so let's go ahead and just change some of the values here. So we've got sort of a lot of white space. We've got temperature going up to 10 to the 10. I assure you a two solar mass star will never get that hot. So let's, uh, let's just change that to eight. Uh, oh, that was the density. Uh, that's still fine. Let's just change that to 10 to the 8. The temperature is never going to get up to there, so let's change that to 8. So now we'll go 8 and 8, and okay, now we've started to get, um, uh, I don't think the density will go up to 10 to the 9, so we'll just leave that as, we can always change it. <laughs> okay, but that's an example of the, uh, oh, we can toggle off. There's lots of toggles in this one. Um, if we wanted to turn off the degeneracy line, which I don't see here because I tend to always leave it on. But let's say we wanted to turn it off. Let's say for whatever reason we don't like that degeneracy line. It's annoying to us. So we know how to do that. So we go to our uh, history, uh, our PG star actually, PG star defaults, and I will search for degen, T row profile. That's what we are. No, nope, we're not in T. Here it is. T row degeneracy line equal true. So I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to go back to my end list. This is T row, and I'm going to turn that degeneracy line off. And boom, away it goes. Um, I kind of like it on there because it tells me when material is degenerate or not entering degeneracy. So there's our degeneracy line. Okay, but we learned how to go to our PG star defaults and pull out something that was not in this end list. Okay, uh, so how about this is the central temperature and density as a function of time, but sort of how is the thermodynamics doing over the model of the star? So here we want to turn on our T row profile. And so we'll go a little farther down and we're gonna throw up yet another window. This is getting super annoying. So we will, and there we go. So this is a T row profile. So this is the density as uh, a function of temperature. So it's just like the, the, the one we just did, except this is only for the central conditions and it's a history, and this is a profile. Uh, and so the center of the star is here. We're starting to get close to helium burn as one might expect. Uh, and then the color coding here is whether uh, how much energy generation is being done if it's in sort of shades of red, orange, or yellow. And then the blues, uh, purples, are indicative of the mixing. So out here, this is the envelope of the star, so it's pretty much convective. Uh, we've got a radiative region, then we've got our hydrogen shell burning going on here, and so this is the oranges and yellows. This is indicating that we've got some burning going on, not in the center of the star, but off center of the star that's dominating. Uh, and you can change all kinds of things in these profile plots. So let's go ahead and just play with some of that. Uh, uh, you can turn off, uh, let's just show EOS regions, for example. Some people find that useful. And so these are, um, at least at the time, uh, the boundaries of different equations of state that are stitched together to form the Mesa equation of state. So out here we're in uh, PC land, um, uh, Potenkin and Chabier. Then we have Opal, so most of the model is residing in Opal land. Uh, and then up here is Helm, so we're sort of uh, transitioning the boundary between Opal and Helm here. This is the uh, gamma 1 less than 4 thirds instability region, so massive stars will go through here. This is the origin of pulsational um, instabilities in massive stars, for the most part. Um, and then we, you can see we've got, let's go ahead and turn that off and let's look at some of these other lines. So false. So I'll take that away. And just some of these lines. So these, these, uh, these lines here indicate the 
proximate regions where hydrogen burning will occur, where helium burning will occur, uh, carbon burning and oxygen burning will occur. This is sort of the degeneracy line here. The Fermi energy over KT is equal to 4. It's the exact same degeneracy line that we saw in the central temperature, central density plot. And then we have P rad equals P gas here. Uh, uh, and so this becomes the radiation uh, dominated line. Okay, and stars in general will follow a, a profile of approximately constant radiation entropy. So T cubed over rho is approximately equal to constant as we go through. Uh, some people like to see opacities when they're doing this stuff, so we can change that to true. And so these are then the, uh, at least in 12, 7, 7, 8, uh, the opacity boundaries, so we're mainly in the opal OP uh, opacity regime. We get a little blend out here as we go into Ferguson. We've got a couple of new lines. This is where the radiative opacity equals the conductive opacity um, in the, the blue dotted line here. And so we've crossed this blue dotted line, and so everything to the right here is dominated by conduction, primarily electrons, electron, electron. Uh, and so energy transport out here as you might expect, in a G de degenerate core is dominated by conduction um, as opposed to a radiative opacity, but most of the model lives out here in the radiative opacity land. Okay, so I'll change that to false. There's lots of things you can add on to your profile plots. Uh, let me just do one. This one is kind of interesting. So this is the mass locus. So if you turn on mass locus, uh, and they're defined here, you can, this is the, the center of the star. It's about a, was a two solar mass? I don't know exactly what it is now. We'll find out soon. Uh, and this is the half mass point. So this is where half solar mass is. So half of the interior mass is in here. This is the 0.99 mass. So 99% of the mass is interior to this point, 95% interior to this point, half in interior to this point. Okay. Uh, and those can be useful marker points, if you like, um, on the model to help guide you where the mass is uh, on these plots. So I'm going to leave that up. Okay, so how many windows have we got up? We have uh, seven. That's pretty annoying. And so if I want to change back to something, I've got to do something kludgy like this. Okay, so this is my power plot. Uh, you can see that triple alpha is just barely starting to come up, so we're starting to do a real low helium burn here. This is hydrogen shell burning. This is the PP uh, CNO. And if I wanted to go check what my other, let's say, one. Um, okay, this is my abundance plot. Yep, I am slowly but surely building my helium core. And so this is really kind of annoying to be having to bounce back between windows and stuff. Uh, okay. So we've now ascended the red giant branch. We're going over into the cooler region. So maybe I'll change that. Uh, so I'd set that to 3.6. So let's go ahead and cool that off a little bit. Let's send that down to 3.3. Okay. <clears throat> Probably never gonna go below there. So let's go ahead and change that to 0.5. And we'll just lower that boundary a little bit. Uh, there we go. Okay, so really annoying. Yes, it is. My screen's getting too crowded. I can't see everything at once, which I would like to do. I want to see everything at once so I get kind of a global picture of what is going on with the model. And so we're going to clean this mess up uh, by putting everything on a grid plot, which was, was our objective for this tutorial. So we're going to close all the windows by setting all of the plot logicals equal to false. So we had set the abundance, power, kip, HR, profile panels one, T row, uh, T row profile. We're going to set all those to false. And when we do that, in the terminal window running the calculation, which is right here, again, our time step is still limited by um, hydrogen because we're building hydrogen burning because we're building a helium core. We're going to set all those to false. And when you do that uh, in where it's running, uh, the X11 server will ask you to close those. So you'll see what happens. So let's go up and I'm gonna change all those wind flags. So I'm gonna search for wind flag. And I'm gonna turn everything that is true there to false. So no abundance, no power. Close all those windows. There's our Kippenhahn. 
each arm. Profile one. T row. So that was our central temperature and density. These are the central, these are the profiles, the T row profiles. And that was it. So I hit save. And now I go over to where it's running and it's going to ask me to close those out. So I'll hit return, return. We're going to do that one for each of those plots, each of those plot windows. And once all those windows are closed, we have no more windows up and the calculation will be carrying along. Okay. So on a grid plot, what you want to do is sketch the layout that you would like to have for your grid plot. So what I would like to see is I'd like to have some informative text up top, things like tell me what the mass is, tell me what the time step is, tell me what my mass um, loss rate is, all kinds of information uh, up in the text. And I would like to put that abundance plot that we have, our mass fractions over here, nice and big, because I kind of like that one, it's my gas tank. How quickly I'm burning that gas tank, power. I want to put my Kippenhahn diagram below that so I get sort of a global uh, space-time diagram of what's going on. I'd like to see the T-Row profile plot that we did next to that. I'd like to see the central temperature, central density history plot next to that. I'd like to have a sequence of profiles, plots over here, indicating what's going on at the surface. I'd like to have some profiles next to that, which are uh, telling me what's going on in the core. Finally, I'd like to put my HR diagram uh, up here, and it won't be relevant for this plot, but if I was doing a massive star, I'm interested in um, the infall speed, so I can tell when I'm reaching the onset of core collapse, uh, and then what the YE is, what the ratio of um, um, Z bar to A bar is, so I can tell the neutron richness of the core as it falls on down. So this is what I would like to do, and I will be honest, it go, if you want uh, something that looks pretty, um, dialing in that geometry of our sketch to make it pretty, to make it nice, uh, takes a little bit of time. I've already gone ahead and done this for you for one, so we're going to go to um, our grid. So we're going to set our grid equal to true. I've got a fairly big window here. This will be interesting to see what happens. And so you can see when you make a grid plot, uh, that just zeroes everything out initially, so it resets the faults. And then I go ahead and I start. I want my text up there. I want my abundance plot there. I want my power here. And so you position with these left, right, up, downs, rows, columns. You position where you want the plot. And yes, it takes a little bit of fiddling um, to get it uh, to be pretty and nice. But let's go ahead and put that up. And voila. Okay. And this is our lovely dashboard grid pot giving us a global view of what is going on with the particular model. Up here, so we can see we're at the age, we're a little over a billion years into the model now at SAMS. Uh, we're at model 4000. Uh, our time step, so this model has about 4000 zones, so it's pretty well resolved. Uh, we happen to be running a, a 21 isotope here, Aprox and Friends. Um, and then information about how the calculation is doing. We've got no retries, no backups. This model is going smooth as glass. The current mass, uh, the mass loss rate, and you know just information about the surface uh, uh, and the core as it goes through. Here's our abundance plot, our power plot, Kippenhahn plot, um, T-Row profile plot, the history plot, there, here's some of our surface quantities. So we did all of these plots, everything on the left here we did. This is the, the log of the pressure is the x-axis. So I'm looking at the uh, surface values. And then next to that, which we didn't open, but you can take a look at, this is uh, mass on the x-axis out to 1.5. So I'm kind of looking at the core region. Uh, and I've got various quantities, temperature density, temperature density of surface, temperature density of the core, um, and various quantities here. This plot happens to have omega and j rot, as though the model was rotating. There's no rotation here, so that's zero. Here's our HR diagram, uh, and then here's our, our interior velocity profile and YE. Initially, when uh, we start off with hydrogen, um, YE is up around 0.8 or so. Once we enter helium, Z bar over A bar is about a half, so you can see this one half here starting to build, and if the, the model got neutron rich, um, it would start dropping below 0.5. So we've got this lovely global 
view of what is going on with our model. And so I encourage you to make your own grid plots once you get going on a model and you start getting serious and moving into production value on your model to go ahead and create a, it's worth the time to create a grid plot uh, and get kind of a global view of whatever you would like to show as the model as it goes through. Okay. So <clears throat> you can also, uh, there are times when you may not want to have a window up, uh, but you do want to take a look at the visuals later. And for example, if you're running on a cluster, uh, you know, especially a remote cluster, it's not convenient to have an X11 window up. Um, so that's fine, you can turn off the window flag, uh, and but you can still save the plots by turning on the grid flag. And this is also useful for making movies, if you've got a slow internet, slow graphics, if you want a clutter-free desktop while you're running, all kinds of reasons why you may want to do that. So let's go ahead and turn off grid. And again, I have to go to my window because it's going to ask me, are you sure? And I'm sure. Boom. And there it goes. Uh, but we're still saving the files. And in fact, Easter egg surprise, we've had this grid flag on the whole time we've been running. Um, so here it's been saving these files. It's been saving in a, file, in a directory called grid PNG. Uh, and so you can take those and turn it into a movie. And so let's go ahead and make a movie from the PNG files uh, from the, the script uh, that is included. I can see this is slightly dated. That uh, .sh shouldn't be there anymore, but that's okay. I'll fix that typo later. So uh, let's go ahead and you can see it's storing. Here's an example of it storing that PNG file, grid underscore PNG 4300 um, as it does that. So let's go ahead and make a movie those PNG files. We'll stop this calculation. So images to movie, yeah, you can drop the .sh, that's an older version, I should fix that, uh, but it's images to movies, and then I, the location of the PNG files are in a grid underscore PNG and everything in PNG, and I'm going to make that movie an MP4, um, I'm going to call it summary. So I'll go ahead and take those, how many do we got? We got about 4,300. So we're going to take those 4,300 PNG files and we're going to spin it into a movie. And we will then open the movie. So this is opened up in a movie player. Uh, and now, rather than watching the movie, the evolution grind away, uh, you can go ahead and watch it as it goes. And you can see all our adjustments. So all that jerking around the beginning was us doing adjustments um, as we were playing with it live. And so uh, it's a relatively short movie at nine seconds, uh, 30 frames per second or so. Um, so you can always drive back. You can always dial in where you want. You can always, usually in a movie player, you can do f uh, frame by frame. Uh, and so if you want to stop and take a look at what's really going on uh, with that model, you can slow it down. You don't have to use an autoplay. You can go back and forward and so on. Um, and so I really encourage watching models as they evolve. They're a super useful way to both learn um, and to analyze your model as it's going down. Okay. And so with that, I want to thank you very much for tuning in to this tutorial on customizing PG Star for your models. Thanks. Bye bye.